Lord has made, uh, we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. God is so, so good. Amen. He's awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, we want to welcome you here. And uh, we thank God for you. Uh, and we just send blessings your way this morning. And we say you're uh, blessed going in and blessed going out. Um, and all is well. Um, praise God. And I think uh, this is going to be a great day for you. And we want you to make your mind up. It's going to be a great day for you. And uh, God is going to do some amazing, amazing things. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, hold on, I'm doing last minute stuff here. All is well today. And I think that uh, God Almighty is going to begin to do some amazing things in your life today. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good deal. Good deal. So uh, we send blessings your way this morning. And uh, we say you're blessed going in and blessed coming out. We say you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and never again beneath. And uh, we just thank God that everything is well. Yeah, I think we I got that schedule. Yeah, okay. So I send blessings to those of you who are in Lorraine, Ohio today. And, uh, you know, Lorraine, Ohio is a special place for our ministry. This is uh, the first change convention I've ever, I ever did was in, and I believe it was in Lorraine, Ohio. And uh, we're, we're going to do something special there just to celebrate it because it's coming real close to about uh, 30 something years. And we want to do something special in L Lorraine, Ohio. I think it was at one of the theaters. Uh, I don't know if it was the name of it was paradise or some of you from Lorraine might know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, you know, we send blessings your way this morning. Uh, we send blessings to Austin, Texas this morning. Um, we send blessings to Wyoming, praise God, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, praise the Lord. Uh, send blessings to South Africa this morning. And uh, praise God. Uh, all is well with you. All is well with me. All is well with us. And uh, I hope you made some time and carved some time out for God yesterday. And you know, and prayerfully, you'll do the same thing today. Make some time and carve some time out for God today in your life. We are on a journey of developing a very intimate, sincere relationship with the Lord God. And as we are on that journey, uh, we're just making it very, very clear that, uh, you know, we're just going to trust God. We're going to trust God in, in everything. We're going to trust God in all that he all that he does and and um, all that he will continue to do in our lives. And, um, you know, that's just where we are. This is this is not about trying to look religious or act religious. This is about a personal one on one relationship with the almighty God. And so uh, we want you to. To, to, to grab hold of that and to uh, believe God that all is well in the name of Jesus. And so as we do that, uh, you know, we want to do it knowing that uh, it thrills heaven for us to seek him and to seek a relationship with him. Um, it, it's going to be something that is going to be life changing. You're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to recognize it. You're going to be able to know that uh, something's different in my life. I can tell you one thing that that I, I notice all the time. It's my the results of me spending time in prayer and spending time with God. Uh, I feel like I'm in an anointing of ease. What used to be 
uh, somewhat difficult and required a lot of effort to try to get it done uh, or, or doing things with sweat. I think God will move the sweating away and uh, he'll cause you to do things with ease. So I pronounce that blessing over you right now today that the anointing on your life is going to move you into a season of ease. Glory to God. A season of ease. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And and yeah, I mean, I feel like that this morning. It's just like, you know, all is well. We move into this season of ease. We give God praise and thanksgiving because of who he is. And, you know, it, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty, pretty awesome. And so I welcome you this morning. I declare the blessing over your life. Uh, you might want to write that down somewhere. I believe that I am moving into a season of ease, a season of ease. Praise God. Uh, welcome some of you late. I kind of dropped off some some of you on Facebook. I see you back with us to, and joining us. And so we're going to go ahead. And uh, yeah, I, I, that was something. Sweatless victories. That when you move into a season of ease, you move into a place of sweatless victory. Uh, not all winners have to sweat in order to win. I believe that we're going to be winners <clears throat> that will um, have sweatless victories in our life, a season of ease. Man, I received that myself. I received that, a season of ease. And that's what happens when the anointing comes in. The anointing removes burdens and it destroys yokes and it brings you to into a season of ease. It's just like no drama, no, um, no, no stress, all that. A season of ease where... You're so confident about God. And I, I, I believe the only way that's going to come in your life is when you declare and make a declaration of dependence upon God. Make a declaration of dependence upon God. Wow. A declaration of dependence. I declare that I depend on you, Lord. And, and I said this last night, right before I went to bed, I was like, you know, Lord, I depend on you. And I thought, I'm like, uh show me that show me how some, give me some practical um ways of depending on you so i can share it with everybody um you know is it just saying lord i depend on you or you know are there other um illustrations you know what does that look like depending on god leaning on god what does that what does that look like? Um, you know, like yielding to the Holy Spirit. I know what that looks like. It's kind of like in, in driving a car. You let it when you yield to that car, you let it go ahead of you. And so when you yield to the Holy Spirit, you let him go ahead of you. And um, and so, you know, this this is the kind of relationship I'm talking about, allowing God to speak to you and to bring you into a greater depth and height and understanding of his word amen let's go ahead and do, get psalms 191 equipped ready i declare that i will dwell in the shelter of the most high god i declare that i will find rest in the shadow of the almighty i declare that god is my refuge and my fortress I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. 
I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. In the name of Jesus, I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me in my house. In Jesus' name, today I will have a season of ease. Today I will have sweatless victories. Today I declare that I'm moving into a deeper relationship with my Heavenly Father. All is well, and I thank you for unexpected breakthroughs. I thank you for unexpected blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, I just heard this. Be careful not to compare yourself amongst yourself. That will create some big problems. Just, you know, find out who God wants you to be and uh, and be that. Find out who God wants you to be and be that. Be careful not to compare yourself amongst yourself. And be, and be careful what you compare yourself with. You know, you see what's going on on the outside. You have no idea what might, what the real deal might be. So uh, we're, in, we're in a season of ease. It's Friday. A season of ease, dude. Just chill. And, uh, you know, there'll be things that happen today. You know, just because trouble comes doesn't mean you have to be troubled by it. Okay? So make sure that that does not happen to you. And, and that's not something that that's going to, you know, be a problem in your life. All right. All right. So yesterday we began to talk about righteousness and guilt. And I just want to continue on that vein just for a moment. Um, what does it mean to be self-righteous? I think yesterday we said that we define self-righteousness as people that work hard and strive to get right with God people that work hard and they strive to get right with God. And Galatians chapter 2.16 says we're not right with God because we keep the law, but we're right with God because of our faith in Jesus Christ. So our righteousness doesn't come by us doing right. I'm not righteous because I do right. I'm righteous because I have faith in Jesus Christ who did right. And I put on his righteousness. OK, so as long as he's righteous, I'm righteous because my righteousness is not based on me. My righteousness is based on him. Now, you settling this issue of righteousness in your life is going to be huge in the last days because throughout time, Satan has always attacked the identity of people and he wants to attack your identity. He wants to convince you you're not righteous. Look at what you did last week. And you got to understand, I'm the righteousness of God. I repented of that. God's forgiven me of it. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call myself nothing else but righteous. Okay, and so righteous self righteousness uh, is is when you strive to get right with God on your own. Okay, you're dependent on yourself instead of dependent on Him. You declared where where your where self righteousness is is concerned. You declared your independence from the righteousness. Uh, of God. And so we wanted to bring religion in because we we talked we talked about religion yesterday and we know that 
you can do things religiously, meaning that you do the same thing every day, all the time, religiously. But we're talking about that that spirit of religion and religion is the same thing as self-righteous. It's man's pursuit to make himself right before God. That's what religion is. So, you know, when you hear me talk about uh, the difference between being a Christian and being religious, you know, Christianity for us should be receiving Christ as our righteousness. And religion is the same thing as self-righteousness. It's your pursuit. It's, it's your pursuit with your own efforts to try to make yourself right before God. Religion operates through guilt and fear. Religion operates through guilt and fear. It's amazing to me. Um, I can recall throughout my lifetime, I, I'd go to some churches and there was always some guilt, some shame, some fear that came through the pulpit. Um, religion operates through guilt and fear. De dependency on guilt is what keeps religion alive and well. And Jesus came to remove the condemnation, the shame and the guilt by us believing on him. And I don't know. I mean, you go to church, you, you know, well, you know, if you ain't praying an hour a day, then God ain't going to bless you. Um, you know, prayer is good to spend time with God, but don't condemn me with it. You know, uh, you know, if you don't bring your tithe, uh, you're going to be cursed. Just guilt. You, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Um, you didn't come to the fellowship this weekend. It really, you know, God, God can't help those who don't help themselves. And it's just constant guilt and fear. And that's, and that's what keeps, that's what religion depends on in order to, to operate. And Jesus came to set us free from all that and, it, and ultimately to set us free from religion. Okay. Uh, now I, I, I want to, I'm looking at my time to see what I got on this. Um, let's see. Self-righteousness. Let me say it like this is the open door to the works of the flesh. Self-righteousness is the open door to the works of the flesh. Now you want to know where bad behavior comes from. The works of the flesh come from. It comes from self-righteousness. It comes from religion, self-righteousness before the works of the flesh manifest. For example, before adultery, before fornication, before selfish ambitions, before heresies, before envy, before drunkenness, guilt causes us to work on ourselves to clean up our act. Guilt causes us to work on ourselves to clean up our act. And so now you're trying to do what only Jesus can do and what Jesus has already done. His blood's already cleaned us, cleansed us up. And so my guilt, if you keep it and call it yours and you don't get rid of that guilt, it causes us to work on ourselves to clean up our acts. Now, listen to what I'm saying here now. Whenever we get into self-righteousness in time, sin will be the result. Whenever we get into self-righteousness, it's just a matter of time, sin will be the result. Let me say it like this. Whenever, when, whenever we get into self-righteousness or religion, because remember, they're the same. It, it's your pursuit to try to make yourself right with God. It's your pursuit. And so whenever you get into self-righteousness, in time, what happens? Sin will be the result. So what happens? We sin, watch this, and then we try to fix it. Then we fail again. And then we try to, and then we experience shame. And then we sin again and then we attempt to fix it. And then we fail and we experience shame and on it goes like a vicious cycle with no end. Now, let me say that again. I, I want you to get what I'm saying here, man. Um, we sin and then what? Then we try to fix it. Then we fail again and then we experience shame. And then we sin again and then we attempt to fix it. And then we fail and we experience shame and on it goes 
on and on. Lasciviousness is what it's called. It's a vicious cycle that seems like it has no end. It's a cycle of sin. A cycle of sin will begin to develop because of self-condemnation. Okay? And if we condemn ourselves, we cannot get out of the cycle of sin. If we condemn ourselves, we can't get out of the cycle of sin. Well, why? Why is that? Because we have identified ourselves by our behavior instead of by our identity in Christ. You see how this works? Get in that cycle of sin uh, and that develops self-condemnation and we condemn ourselves. We walk around with guilt, walk around with shame because we have identified ourselves by our behavior and not our identity. And that's why you got to identify yourself based on what Jesus said. Jesus said, uh, you're the righteousness of God. And so no matter what happens, I'm the righteousness of God. The day you believe you're right, then the day, that's the day you'll start doing right. Uh, we, we try to define ourselves by, by what we do versus who we are. And so if we have bad behavior, then we say, well, I'm a bad person. And that then nothing's not going is, is never going to change. You've got to right away grab hold tight to what Jesus says and who Jesus says you are. You are the righteousness of God. You hold on to that tightly. And eventually you start believing you're righteous and receiving that, then you'll start doing right. We will act like what we believe we are. We will act like what we believe we are. And if you believe you are a bad man, you will act bad. But if you believe you are a righteous man, eventually righteousness will come in. You see, the more people demand righteousness, the more people demand righteousness by performance, then the more they say, I can't live this Christian life. The more people demand righteousness by performance, then the more people are going to say, well, you know, I just I just can't live this Christian life. It's just too hard for me. But you know what? In reality. Christian life is not too hard. Listen, it's impossible without Jesus. Yeah, it's impossible. Me trying to live like this without Jesus is it's not only hard, it's impossible. There's only one person who lived up to the standards that God's holiness requires, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I, I got to have him. I got to have him in everything that I do. I got to have him in everything that I say. And it's just amazing how all of this stuff starts with, you know, self-righteousness. And then the self-righteousness is, you know, sustained by by guilt think about that self-righteousness that's sustained by guilt look at some examples of this in the bible uh, of people experiencing feelings of guilt guilt you know adam and eve did in the garden of eden they hid themselves in the garden because they felt guilt guilty of their sin you saw what happened there we see king david he knows the pain of guilt in Psalms 51 verses one through three. Judas committed suicide because of his guilt in Matthew 27 verses three through five. And Jesus on the day of Pentecost, man, excuse me, not Jesus, but the Jews on the day of Pentecost. There was a lot of guilt that was there. But the blood of Christ is the answer to our sin and it's the answer to our guilt. Outside of Christ. All attempts to rid ourselves of guilt are futile. I mean, it's hopeless. Uh, you, you know, to get rid of guilt without Christ, uh, it, it's hope. It's hopeless. It's just hopeless, man. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking that you know, God is good. That's all I know. God is so good. 
and he's worthy to be praised and 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 all is well and you know all is well all is well look here i hope uh did y'all get anything out of this i'm i'm real like chill this morning i'm like you know yeah dude <laughs> it's just you know it, it's one of these things where i kind of made my mind up that you know grace people need to be graceful people uh my job is to to just tell and to teach and hopefully people understand it enough to either want to go dig into it more or they allow those words to minister to them and and they make some changes in their lives that that's what i'm i'm attempting to do um you know i get excited about the things of god um i just i just want you to not be in bondage to especially religion and self-righteousness and i'm so blessed that you would uh tune in on on these con daily confessions this is gigantic blessing for me it's uh i take it seriously uh it's an opportunity to minister the word it is just as serious as you if as if you would come to a change convention or a grace convention or a Sunday morning service or a Wednesday night Bible study that I still feel an obligation to minister to you and to preach the word to you. Uh, so this is, this is so, so, so very important. And um, yeah, man. Yeah. So we just trust in God and with the righteousness of God and, and we hold on to that and you might want to just make that a part of your daily confession every single day. Let the devil know, dude i'm not coming off this i am the righteousness of god and my crazy will never get rid of my identity as long as i receive it by faith i am the righteousness of god and um god sees you as righteous so when you woke up this morning god saw a righteous person waking up this morning uh whenever you go out to do what you're going to do today god sees a righteous person going out and do that uh yeah man this is um this is a serious deal and um we pray that you know the last two days if you put them together you might want to pull this back up again and look at it again and really get it in your spirit um but there's no way you should um allow yourself to maintain this guilt when you have the blood of jesus that has already been shed for you and so i call you free right now you're free. You're free. And uh, praise the Lord, you're free. Amen. Praise God. Well, hey, I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day today. And, uh, you know, stay with God, man. No matter what happens, stay with God. Remember that season of ease. That season of ease. Yeah, bro season of ease god bless you guys i love you so much have a wonderful weekend and if you can join us at church uh at the world dome or uh, log on and join us live through the stream um i'm gonna i'm gonna get in it this this sunday and um we're gonna work on some stuff and i think it'll bless your life well god bless you love you guys so much i'll see you this weekend or 